We're, we're a manufacturer of EPA certified conversions. So we sell to essentially AFS, uh, West Virginia CNG, uh, other uh, conversion companies that are stationed across the country. Mm -hmm. We were one of the first companies to develop a system for the Chrysler Dodge market. Um, and now we have expanded our horizons into the General Motors. The garbage trucks, the heavy fuel use vehicles are exactly that. And they're gonna take up most of the consumption uh, when you get into the public sector, those vehicles certainly use a lot of fuel, but not nearly as much as those um, those everyday uh, set route fleet vehicles. Um, right now, in the early adoption, you know the, the the most advantageous route is really the heavy fuel use vehicles. So your refuse, your transit, you see those guys converting first, or, or transitioning is a better term uh, to to natural gas because they have set routes. Um, they also have calculated fuel use as well. They, they know their routes, they know their mileage, they know how much gas that they use, and they operate in a, in a general area. Um, and in order for this infrastructure to grow, those, those fleets need to be kind of the anchor to the wider adoption. They're not everywhere are refuse fleets and not everywhere are transit fleets using natural gas. They may be using diesel, they may be using propane, they may be using several other sources, but really what it comes down to is, is they're heavy fuel use vehicles and they run set routes in a, in a small pocket. So they can determine, they have predetermined mileage um, to get through their, their, their shift in one day. They don't have variable routes might be longer than what you really needed. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, we don't know what we really need. We're just, we're just, yeah, we're just learning. Yeah, yeah, we're learning and we're going to cut down from there. So. Um, OK, what do, you, uh, what do you think surprises people the most when they drive an EPD for the first time? Um, uh, there's the green aspect. There's the domestic aspect of being a fuel that comes from our ground. Um, but what it really when it, what it really comes down to now nowadays with the, the increase of, of diesel and, and oil-based fuels um, is it comes down to their bottom line or what, what they're saving. Uh, you can be as green, green as you want, but if you're not saving money, then you know it, it, it becomes a little bit more of a struggle for people to, to go t towards an alternative fuel. But when you see that you, uh, a 40 to 50 percent cost difference between petroleum-based fuels and natural gas, they, it really starts to, to grab their attention because they can reduce their operation cost. Um, it, it, it's showing a lot of promise of, of growing really rapidly, um, but truthfully, it's gonna take some time. Um, you know, out in California, they've been doing this tech, they've used, utilized this technology for over 20 years, and it, it's really taken till now where the, you see the petroleum prices spike for us to really look at at natural gas as a, as a solution to to a, a domestic fuel source, so it, it certainly takes time. Uh, back 20 years ago, it was more along the lines of being green and being domestic. Um, now it's it, it's the added feature of, of having a, a cost-effective fuel, a more cost-effective fuel for their operation. With early adoption, with with um, our installer partners out in the industry, as well as different dealerships that offer um, service to vehicles. You know, we're right now taking the steps to help support those vehicles because they're a different they're a different technology, and the, the way the fuel is delivered to the vehicles, we have to have everything in place ahead of time to make this transition smoother. Because the, the last thing we want is a saturated industry with no serviceability. We don't want vehicles that are out there that no one knows how to work on. So really the way that it's happening right now and how it's looking to be projected is, 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 a, sl is a controlled growth. And I think that's a good thing because we don't want you know, a saturated market where these vehicles can't be serviced. We have an anchor fleet in Cleveland, Ohio that uh, is, is based off of owner operator. It's a, it's a taxi company that the vehicles are leased to their to the drivers and on average operating on natural gas they're saving as a as a leased vehicle so these vehicles they pay for it by the week um, based on the price differential for natural gas versus gasoline of even say a buck fifty these drivers are saving about 150 bucks a week and that goes directly into their pockets